Hi, welcome to LeSynth. I'm Ned, and this is a channel about my passion for all things synthesizers. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I program 10 synth lead patches, including one bonus patch for those that make it to the end. That one will be a little bit more elaborate as it'll have aftertouch involved as well. Now, all the patches that I'm going to show you start from my basic, initialized, or default setting. Now, if you've got your own, that's fine. But if you'd like to use mine, I invite you to click on the link above and down below in the description, watch the very beginning of that video, and then come back here and watch the rest of this one. The synthesizer I'll be using to show you how to program these synth lead patches is the Novation Base Station 2 which I've chosen because while it's fairly simple, it sounds great, and I think a lot of the patches translate very well to a variety of synthesizers. Now for this category, I'm also using three pedals, a reverb, a delay, and a phase shifter. The settings of the parameters of the patches that I'll be showing you will range from zero as a minimum to 100 as a maximum. My channel is very young, and so if you like this kind of tutorial video, please consider subscribing. Now, let's get patching. When I want to play a 90s West Coast style classic whistle, I program something like this patch. It's super simple, yet can allow for maximum melodic expression. There's a single source. It's an oscillator with a triangle waveform that I'll transpose up two octaves. I don't really use the filter, as it's already a very pure sound, so there's not much to carve out. The amplitude envelope has a slightly longer attack than my default version, also a slightly longer release. Medium glide or portamento really makes this patch sing, as does adding some vibrato or pitch modulation. I usually assign the mod wheel to the LFO1 amount, I exaggerate the pitch mod so that I can find the right speed, then I back down to something more subtle. Inspired by the sound of the melodic synth line in The Weeknd's Blinding Lights, this bright sounding patch can easily cut through a mix. I use two identical sawtooth oscillators, tuned one octave apart. To add a little energy, I'll detune oscillator 2 a bit. The volume balance of the oscillators is important as I want oscillator 2's higher pitch sound to be quite a bit lower than oscillator 1. I'll have the sources go through a 24 dB low pass filter with no resonance, a little drive, and only a slight decrease in the cutoff frequency. I'll then increase the mod or filter envelope depth to quickly bump up the cutoff at the very early part of the sound, to give it some added brightness. This patch is not meant to sustain, so the amplitude envelope has sustain at zero, attack is immediate, and decay and release are at mid-length. The filter envelope is similar, except that the decay is a bit shorter, and sustain is slightly higher than zero. I find there's something almost dangerous about a patch with oscillator sync, like it's going to slice through my ears. I love modulating the harmonics with the mod wheel or another continuous controller like a pedal or a ribbon. 
After turning oscillator sync on, I select a sawtooth wave for oscillator 2. In order to highlight the sync effect, I make oscillator 1 silent and choose any waveform for oscillator 2 as they all work. When I want to manually ride the sync effect, I have the mod wheel control the coarse tuning of oscillator 2. I adjust the range to fit my playing style. I'll add some extra life to the sound by adding vibrato to oscillator 1 with a delayed LFO. I use a 24dB low-pass filter with no resonance and a little distortion. The cutoff is at maximum, but I can always close it a bit if the sync effect is too harsh. Only the amplitude envelope is used, and it's my default settings, except for a longer release. When I think of brass-like synth sounds, I immediately hear Jean-Michel Jarre's version in Oxygène Part 4. It's a classic sound for adding some retro flavor to a track. Brass often sounds bright, so I like to use two identical sawtooth oscillators, slightly detuned from each other. I usually blend in some of the sub-oscillator square wave for added thickness. I pick a 12 dB low-pass filter, place the cutoff at about 40%, with no resonance and a bit of drive. The mod or filter envelope amount is set to plus 50%. Both amplitude and filter envelopes are similar with longer attack, short decay, and release. My goal is to have the filter or mod envelope create a high frequency bump at the attack, so I make it longer than the amplitude envelope's attack. I typically play around with the various filter and amplitude envelope settings for a while to find the sweet spot. As a lover of Electro and Plastic Man, one of my favorite synth sounds is that of a Roland 303 with resonance on high and distortion thrown in. Even if I don't have a vintage box, I can still program a patch that will give me similar vibes. I use only one source, either a sawtooth or more often than not, square wave. The filter is a 24 dB low pass filter with the cutoff set at its lowest. I then set the resonance very high but without self-oscillating, and I add a touch of drive. The mod or filter envelope amount is initially set to 50%, but I often change it as I play. Both envelopes have a short attack, no sustain, and medium length decay and release. I also like to assign the mod wheel to the filter cutoff for maximum acidity.
flute-like patch is a classic sound that I always enjoy soloing with. For me, the key is to have a few expressive controls that I can play so that there's variety in the shape and timbre of the patch. I combine two triangle wave oscillators. Oscillator two is tuned one octave higher and is half as loud as oscillator one. While I've tried to add some noise to this patch to simulate human breath, I find that it really doesn't work very well, so I just leave it out. Since the timbre coming from the oscillators is not very rich, I prefer to use a 12 dB bandpass filter. The cutoff frequency is quite low. There's no resonance and just a bit of drive. The mod or filter envelope depth amount is not too high at about 30% so that the initial bump of the cutoff is not too exaggerated. I give both envelopes similar settings with moderate flute-like attack, short decay, and release, along with nearly full sustain. I tend to tinker with these settings before I'm satisfied with the shape of the sound. I will use the mod wheel to modulate the frequency of the cutoff in order to add some extra expression. I also use an LFO in order to add some delayed vibrato. Just like Nick Bat, I truly enjoy a good pulse with modulated patch. This technique really breathes life into leads. I select two identical square or pulse waves and give them equal volume. I then use a slow sine wave LFO in opposite modulation amount to vary each oscillator's pulse width differently. The filter is not modulated, so the cutoff should be at its highest setting. As I want this sound to cut through a mix, I leave the amplitude sustain on maximum and slow down slightly the attack and release. I finish the patch by adding a little glide or portamento and adjust the mod wheel for vibrato. Inspired by sounds I heard in many songs of the mid to late 70s, this patch is my attempt at romantic strings on a monosynth. The key is the generous vibrato effect. The sound is thick as I combine two sawtooth oscillators tuned one octave apart. Oscillator 2 is lower in volume and slightly detuned. In order to create the vibrato effect, both oscillators have their pitch modulated by an LFO set to a triangle waveform at cycling at a moderate human-like speed. To add thickness to the sound, I include the sub-oscillator's square wave at a lower volume. I select a 24 dB low pass filter with the cutoff half closed, no resonance and no drive. 
The filter or mod envelope depth amount is set to about 50%. Both envelopes share the same settings, slightly slowed down attack, decay, and release. Sustain is a little lower than 100%, which gives some energy to the beginning of the sound. I usually add some glide or portamento to the patch to give it more expression. This patch is inspired by Boards of Canada's nostalgic aesthetic, with its lo-fi synths and samples. To me, their sound embodies the natural decay of life, the passage of time. I use two pulse-width modulated oscillators, with oscillator 2 tuned 7 semitones or a musical fifth higher. For the pulse width modulation, I use a slow triangle wave from LFO2 and set the modulation amount to 50%. I then add some delay time to the start of the LFO so that the effect only happens if I hold the note for a while. To simulate tape warble, some pitch modulation will do the trick. I lightly increase LFO1 depth for each oscillator and program a slow triangle wave, which is also delayed. I usually choose a 24 dB low pass filter with the cutoff at around 25%, no resonance, and a bit of drive. If available, I like to use an LFO as well to modulate the cutoff just slightly. The envelopes have a slow attack, decay, and release. and sustain is about 50%. I usually explore making the filter or mod envelope a bit longer. I then finish the patch with some glide. As a big fan of Vangelis and Blade Runner, I love a good vintage-sounding, expressive lead. The pitch wheel is used as a stand-in for the CS80's ribbon controller. The sound should be quite string-like, so I like to use two sawtooth oscillators tuned an octave apart. To add some thickness to the sound, I might detune them slightly using the fine knob. I choose a 24 dB low pass filter with no resonance and no drive. The cutoff is quite low as I like to modulate it with a mod or a filter envelope. I increase the mod depth to very high so I can really hear the sound get brighter. 
The amplitude envelopes attack and release should be slow, the decay very slow, and the sustain should be at about midway. The filter envelope is identical except for its slower attack. I find that with the pitch bend wheel set at plus or minus three semitones, and with some practice, I can simulate a bit the ribbon effect used so well by the Greek master. For this patch, I program the monosynth to respond to various MIDI continuous controller data, allowing me to change its character while I'm playing it. I use two identical sawtooth waves, slightly detuned and at equal volume. I also like to add a little bit of the sub, one octave below, to thicken the sound. Since I want some vibrato or pitch modulation, and I want to control it via aftertouch instead of the mod wheel, I select the sine wave from LFO1 and increase the aftertouch to LFO amount so I can hear the modulation. I can then adjust the speed of the vibrato to my taste. The sources go through a 24 dB low pass filter with a bit of resonance and drive. The cutoff is at 40% and the mod or filter envelope depth amount is at around 20%. Both envelopes have a similar short attack, short decay, and a medium length release. The sustain is at full. For more real-time expression options, I'll have the mod wheel control the filter cutoff, and the pitch bend will be set to plus or minus two semitones. To complete the patch, I'll add some glide or portamento. 